So let's read in Acts chapter 28. Now when they had escaped, they found out that the island was called Malta. So Paul was going to Rome. And while he was going to Rome, um, the, 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 there was a shipwreck. Paul had a shipwreck. This is going to help some people this morning. This is not my, I wasn't supposed to preach, and I'm not preaching. But I want to give you a word. I want to give you a word. Say a word. A word. Amen. In Acts chapter 28. And now when they had escaped, so they had a shipwreck. And they're in, a, they're in a place called Malta. They found an island called Malta. Watch this now. And the natives showed us unusual kindness. That's Paul and the people. And they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hands, they said to one another, no doubt, this man is a murderer whom taught he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow him to live. Let me give you the, let me give you the backdrop on this. Ay, 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 ay. Say fire coming right now. Yeah. Let me, tell you, let me tell you this. Here is Paul preaching the gospel. And Paul is preaching and working for the Lord and doing the work of the Lord. He has to go to this place. And he's following the Lord's direction to go to this place. And when he's going to this place, there came a shipwreck. Could you imagine him having to swim? It seems like everything this man, Paul, is doing seems like, what, what's going on? If, if, why could he get a shipwreck? Then he gets in the shipwreck, he comes on the island, he gets snake bite. Surely God is not with this man. Surely something is going on there. But this is a word for some of you right now. Somebody's going to hold on to this. Everybody start watching Paul. You ever feel like some people watching you? You ever feel like somebody watching to see what the bite in life is going to do to you? Come on, somebody. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Have somebody just watching to say, yeah, 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 I hear he's sick. I, I, hear, I, hear, I hear what's going on. They might lose their house. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 you know what? Yeah, yeah. They say they want to go and do ministry. And look, nothing happening for them. You ever have had some people just... Yeah. Did anybody ever seen somebody just watching to see how you're going to fail? Yes. Yes. Tell them today, keep watching. Right. Come on, tell them, say, keep watching. No, somebody say, tell them, keep watching. Let me tell you something. Because if they're watching you and talking about you, there's something about you that people like. Come on, I'm telling somebody here today, let them keep watching you. Let them keep talking about you. You're not going to die. Because look at this next verse. There's some family members have been talking about some of y'all in this place. There's some siblings that have been talking about you in this place. There's some family talking about your children in this place. And your children is not going to end up to be nothing. There's some people have been speaking over your marriage, over your health, over your family. There's an ex that have been saying all kinds of bad things about you. Trying to just say you're going to fall apart. Wait and see. Tell them keep watching. Keep watching. Because God has put you on the script. And you, listen, you're not going to be. Teenager, you have some friends gossiping about you in school. Some people bullying you in school. Come on, some people saying all kind of mean things about you. People who you taught had your back. People who you taught was your friend. People who you taught was your member and your leaders. I'm back, you know. I say I'm back, you know. I'm back, you know. But it's a new Pastor Marcus. A humbler Pastor Marcus, but the same bold Pastor Marcus. Because let me just say this to you. Let me say this to you. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, Jesus. And let me tell you something. There's going to be people in your weakest moment think that's the time they can take advantage of you. That's the time they're going to think they can climb over you. That's the time where they think, okay, he got a snake bite. She got a snake bite. But look at what the next verse says. But he what? Shook it 
off. Come on, somebody stand up right now. Shake it off. Come on, shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off this morning. Shake it off this morning. Come on, shake it off. And I'm form of shake it off. Let me say this. Saying things, you're not going to be a good parent. You're not a good mother. Somebody been saying you're not a good mother. Some people have been saying things. You have, some of you might have had to deal with situations in schools. You may have a mate saying that you're not a good wife, not a good husband. Family member saying not a good, and speaking all kind of stuff about you. Shake it off. Because let me tell you something, that's a load. That's a load. And God did not call you to carry that load. And I'm prophesying over you today from the scriptures. Look, it says, and he shook off the creature into the fire. Guess what? That situation shall be burned under the fire of the Holy Ghost. That will be burned. Listen, the enemy will not destroy you. It will not destroy you. But he shook it off. And the creature fell. And he suffered. And he suffered. And he suffered. No harm. Here's what I'm saying. Everything that the enemy tried to steal from you, he has to give it. When you recognize it was the fingerprints of the enemy, he has to give it back to you seven times. Say seven times. Now y'all just saying because how much you believe in it, right? Seven times. When I went through this situation two years ago, the amount of members I had in Destiny Dominion, the devil got to give it back seven times. That seven times the leaders, the quality of leaders, the quality of people, seven times. Are y'all hearing me this morning? How much you're gonna do that for your own life right now? Look at the next verse. I didn't even plan to do all this this morning. I was just gonna be nice and easy going. However. They were expecting. They were what? Expecting. You ever had some people expecting your downfall? You ever had some people waiting and say it's only a matter of time? You ever been there? Have you ever? Don't be, don't be that, don't be so naive that you don't know there's people who's smiling in your face, but deep in their heart they're expecting your downfall. They want to see your downfall. They want to see your downfall. They want to see you. They talk about you. But look at what the Bible says. Expecting that he would what? Swell up. He's going to swell up. I'm telling you, you're not going to. This is not, you're not going to fall apart. You're going to pay your bills on time. Your children is going to stay and your children will fulfill what you have prophesied over your children. And you will fulfill what God has prophesied over your life. Whatever you've been through, whatever people have been saying about you, this too shall pass. It only got you stronger. I said it only got you. Teenagers, learn this. Don't for Teenagers, I, mean, I know, listen, I am prophesying that Destiny Dominion will have one of the most powerful youth ministries coming forward. I'm devoted for that coming back. I'm devoted to my children's ministry, devoted to my youth ministry, and devoted to my young adults. That's powerful. I'm coming back with that kind of desire Amen. but teenagers let me tell you something bullying is taking place in this world right now but bullies don't bully just anybody bullies bully bully people that they see potential in them yes. when people are talking about you when people are saying mean things they see something about you people don't talk about people who don't have no importance if somebody's on a phone talking about you there must be some importance about you. Yes. If people are sitting down thinking about you, there's some importance about you. Teenagers, the people are sitting in a cafeteria talking about you, there's some importance about you. If people are talking about your children, there's something about your children. Amen. There's something about your family. There's something about your life. There's envy. Envy. There's secret envy. That people can envy your family, envy you, envy your children, envy your life. Joseph didn't even know. Joseph thought he had brothers. Joseph thought he had family. Joseph thought he was among his own people. And his own people was just, his own people wanted to see him fall. Come on, somebody. David thought he had brothers. 
David taught her, uh, my brother, I'm taking some food down to my brothers. I'm, I'm coming to be with my brother. I'm coming to help my brother. And the very brothers I'm going to help is the ones who is talking about me. Is the very one who wants to see my downfall. Who wants to see my destruction. And it can hurt you. It can hurt. It can hurt. But the swelling will not happen. The bite might have stung but it will not kill you. The words spoken about you, the things done towards you, the, the, work, the things that people are saying at work for you, people who are gunning to see you lose your job, that co-worker who just want to see you don't make it. I talk to people in this work, in, in workplace, people are coming, people at workplace right now, just want to sabotage them, just want to see them fail. You think that is of God? Somebody need to hear it. Am I, am I being led by the Holy Ghost? Or you, this is not Pastor. I'm not throwing no words because nobody to throw words for. There's nobody that important. I'm throwing words. I just want the world and I want the realm of the Spirit to recognize that Marcus Martinez, um, I've gotten a bite, but it did not destroy me. Yeah. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. However, they're expecting that he would swell up and suddenly fall down dead. They thought he was going to die. But after they had looked, <laughs> after they had looked for how long? long Spent a lot of time on Facebook. Spent a lot of time on YouTube. Spent a lot of time. Keep asking everybody about how she doing, how he doing, how they doing. Because all you're going to hear is they're still living. Amen. They're still making it in life. Let them keep talking. Is this helping anybody? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I just, I did not, I didn't, this didn't even was in my head this morning. That just came right there, right there. Sitting right there, that word just came up in my belly. Right there. However, expecting that he would swell up and suddenly fall down. But after he had looked for a long time and saw no what? They saw what? No harm come to him. They changed their minds. Come on, I said they changed their minds. I'm telling you right now the Lord says that vengeance is not yours but belongs to the Lord and it's the Lord I remember a story in the Bible. If this is of God no man can stop it if it's not of God then let's just wait. It will fall apart if you are of God and you are God's daughter and you are God's son and you are following Jesus Christ no tongue in hell, no power in hell, no destruction from hell will be able to stop you from fulfilling your destiny in the name of Jesus. How much you believe that? Nothing will be able to stop you if you are of God. If you are of your flesh, that's where the problem is. If you are of yourself, that's where the problem is. And let's finish up here. And they changed their mind and said, that he was a God. All of a sudden, he was a wicked man, a wicked woman. The next moment, he's a what? God. Let me, about, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me give you the scripture for this. When a man and a woman ways, pleases the Lord, he will make even his what? Enemy to be at peace with him. Say that with me. When a man and a woman ways, pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemy to be at peace with him. I declare over your life today that any attack of the evil one over your life, as you submit to the Holy Spirit, as you submit to the word of the living God, that God will cause every tongue that rise up against you, you shall condemn it in the name of Jesus Christ, for this is your heritage as a child of the living God. I declare that every satanic power, every lie, every deception, every word right now to break you down, every word that is spoken over your life, to bring destruction over your life, we break it in the name of Jesus. Every lie, every lying spirit that people have yielded to in the name of Jesus, I break it down every spirit of confusion every spirit of division i break it down in the name of jesus every spirit of pride 
every spirit of rejection over your life I break it down every end confusion I break it down in the name of Jesus every twisted every twisted words over your life to distort your character to defame who you are in the name of Jesus we break it down I declare over your ministry over your children over your family over your finances in the name of Jesus every tongue every tongue every tongue I speak right now shut up in the name of Jesus every tongue shut up in the name of Jesus over your life come and pray over your life right now if you know you've been battling if you know you've been warring right now pray over your life right now pray over your life right now in the name of Jesus father we declare it we declare it we declare it there's a peace in this place there's a joy in this place there's a freedom coming in this place I sense it moving it's moving it's moving it's moving it's moving it's moving it's moving in your life right now it's moving it's moving Oh God, thank you, Lord, for protecting me. Oh God, thank you for sustaining me. Oh God, thank you for keeping me. Oh God, thank you for strengthening me. Oh God, thank you for standing with me. Oh, thank you, Lord. We praise your name right now. We glorify you. We magnify you. Fight for us right now, Lord. Fight for your children right now, Lord God. There is warfare in this place right now. Oh, come on, there's warfare in this place. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Praki prende in your family life oh there's people speaking over you there is a person you are a woman mm, Jesus there, 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 there you've tried to date a person and that family have just bring you down have spoken all kind of negativity over you you get confused wondering is this who I'm who they talking about I don't even they just re, this is, trying to confuse that gentleman's mind speaking all kind of negativity over you if that's you I don't have to call you up you know who you are you are a child of God you're a child of God and what God put together no man can put it asunder there's some married people in this room that even right now the enemy's trying to, 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 to just bring division in your home Family members are just coming at you, coming at you, speaking all kind of lies about you. You feel heavy. Take authority over it right now. In workplace, in the workplace, there's been people spoken over you, words spoken over you. Lies about you at your workplace. People saying things about you in the workplace that is not true. There are supervisors that, that is gunning for you right now, wanting to see you lose your job lose it I don't know man I, I didn't plan to say all this this morning but I feel like this is what God wants to we got a war this morning this, this is not a game time this is you think this is this church this is not this church listen there's not a church here this morning this is the word of the Lord I feel the presence of the Lord speaking right now some of you need to stand up and fight for your family right now fight for your job right now fight for your children right now fight for a fight you need to fight in prayer right now because God will not bring me up here like this he will not allow me to just function like this right now unless it's prophetically there you are a young man, you are a young woman, and word has been spoken over you. You're not good. You're not going to make it in life. You're going to just be like this one. You're just going to be like that one. You know, no, you feel like this condemnation, and everybody's watching to see you fail. Young man, you shall not fail. Young woman, you shall not fail. Young man, you shall not fail. Maybe there's some people right now, you just started a new life, and you, you know, you're moving forward, and you, you, you feel like you're supposed to get the support from the people that you love the most, and you're not getting that support. You know, you feel like they're watching, they're waiting, they're watching and waiting to see if you're going to fail. You shall not fail. You shall not fail. You shall take care of your family well. God will provide the right employment for you. God will give you the finances. You will not end up on the streets. I declare over you. David says, I have been young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm not speaking in this room. I'm speaking to all those over there. I hear the word of the Lord. I'm hearing the word of the Lord, guys. I hear the word of the Lord saying that some of you have want to do ministry. Some of you have even stepped out to try to do ministry and you feel like everything you have done I feel like it hasn't been happening and many people are just watching to see watching to see if you fail watching to come and says I give up I give up I'm gonna just go and just do whatever you know I'm giving up ministry don't give up the call don't listen some, some pastors some men of God don't give up the call on your life don't give up don't give up 
Don't give up on yourself. You know, the enemy attacks. And he put out his, his attack and then he watches. But as we read today, you're going to keep watching. But nothing's going to happen bad towards your family. Nothing's going to happen bad towards you and your children and your marriage and your health and your workplace. But we need to pray this morning. Pray strong. This morning, I got up very early to pray. And I began to pray. My little boy heard me and he come and said, I want to pray with you. My little son come and sit on my lap and said, I want to pray with you, daddy. He began to pray with me. We are in warfare times, church. The Bible says that we are to resist the devil and he will flee from us. You are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Valerie, come here right now. Come here. Come on, ushers, help me this morning. The Holy Ghost is strong in this place. Come here, come here. Come here. Valerie, stand right here. Stand right here. Let me tell you something. The Lord is saying to tell you, look at me. Stop it. Stop entertaining negative thoughts. Stop playing with thoughts in your head. You are called by the Spirit of the living God. He has given you an assignment. And any man and woman who has been given an assignment, the enemy is co-signed to them to what? To try to deter them. And just because you may get some pushback and kickback does not mean that God's hand is not upon you. And this book will set many people free. And this book will be a light for many people to come to the saving knowledge of a loving God and a merciful God. So the spirit of accusation, do not receive it from this day forth. Recognize it will come, but you don't have to receive it. Any man and woman that is doing anything from the kingdom of God have to learn how to handle criticism. If you don't have criticism, then you're not doing anything. But if you have criticism, that means you're doing something. Be like the man of God who said, I will not come down from that wall. Y'all know that story? Y'all remember him? What's his name? Who? Nehemiah. There was a man named Sanballat. And Nehemiah is on that wall. And Nehemiah, God told Nehemiah, I'm calling you to go and rebuild the wall. That wall that had been broken down by the enemy. Go and rebuild the wall. And while Nehemiah is trying to build that wall and he's up on that wall, there's a man by the name of Sanballat that he keeps coming and tormenting him and says, you don't have the right to build this wall. I'm going to tell the king that you don't. And, and guess what? Sanballat was just the noise of the devil. I'm telling you, you got to get the noise of the devil out of your life right now. I'm telling you, we have a very short time. We have a short time to fulfill the plan and purpose of God for your life. This is not the time for entertainment. This is not the time for just sitting down. Let me tell you something. You're going to face warfare. And you're going to face some serious warfare. I'm not done with her. Why are you telling her to go? God is not done with you yet. The only time God is done with you on this earth, he will never be done with you, is when you breathe your last breath and go with him and you have no more enemy to fight. But God is with you. And Nehemiah had to learn this. He says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have a sword in one hand. And I'm going to have the chowl in the next hand to build this wall. But he says, I'm going to stay focused and doing what God has called me to do. But I'm going to have the word and the spirit ready for every time the enemy come. I'm going to use the word and the Holy Spirit to fight everything. Let me tell you something about this, what they learn about germs. They said when you get, when you, when you, you know, you should let kids play with a little bit of germs. Am I correct to say that? Because if the kids never get any germs, guess what? They, they so, they so what? Fragile. Any little thing come on them, they fall apart. Some of y'all then face some little germs. Some of y'all face some big germs. Some of y'all, them germs are all over you. But Jesus Christ came and cleansed you up and now he says you immune from all the attacks of the enemy coming forth. He will not be able to destroy you in this area anymore. 
Come on. There are things that you've been through in life that now you are more stronger. You are immune now. Come on, say, I'm immune I'm immune to all the negative words. I'm immune to all the negative thinking. I'm immune to anybody speaking bad about me. Those things that, listen, I'm like a duck right now. Listen, just fall on my back and it drop off right now because I know who I am. I know where I'm going. I know my assignment. I know my call and I'm not going to give it up. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Come on, say amen. amen. I recognize, I recognize what the enemy try to do. I recognize what the enemy try to do in my life. This ministry has a tremendous footprint and voice in this nation. And he thought he was going to knock us out. But thank God for faithful men and women who stayed strong. Who stayed strong and then used my time of weakness to, to, to usurp authority. But men who's, who stayed and be faithful. And the leader is back. And when the leader is back, all the insects got to run. I'm telling you. It's time for us to go forward now. And it's time for every one of you. There's giftings in this room. There's some of you who could sing. Preach better than me. Teach better than me. Have administrative skills. And you guys are failing to realize something. That the clock is ticking. And you just think you sitting down home reading your Bible, quoting scriptures, come to church on a Sunday morning, and you think you're fulfilling God's plan. No, 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 no. That's your everyday plan to stay in the Word. But you have a gift things that need to be given out. And every single one of you in this room, and every single one of you, let me tell you something. The Bible says every man must give an account to God. And I love you that much to tell you, you need to get serious about these last days. Because these days and the local church, the way the local church, we don't know how long we have the local church like the way it is right now. And so as much as we still have the local church to get people saved, listen, we need to use our time wisely. You hear me? This is no more time for you to just come to church on a Sunday morning and then jump out and run out and don't see you until next Sunday again. It's time for you to use your giftings. And I want to say this to the worship team. I'm going to say it real bold right now. This is not a concert. And when we do here, I want to see the prophetic come out of this worship team. Starting from next Sunday, I'm going to be here. And I want that piano to prophesy when they play, whoever is playing it. And the drums, when the different drummers prophesy. When we come in here, I want everything we do here to be by the Holy Spirit. Nothing will be done of the flesh. If I don't have a word to preach, I don't preach. I'll say, who got the word? Somebody got the word? And every one of us should come so full. I should say right now, is there anybody in this room have a word of encouragement? After what I just said here, there should be a three, four, five people come up and say, Pastor, let me just add to what you just said. Let me just add another piece to what you just said. How much you believe that's the Bible? That's what the local church, but what we have done for so long. And that's where the problem happened. When the man of God get attacked, everything gets spoiled because everybody's attention has only been on who? One man. We need to be our eyes on who? Jesus. And every single one of us should come in here so full of the Holy Spirit that guess what? Ah, uh, come here guys. Come here. You ever watch the Canadian geese? Come on behind me. Come on. Here's about the Canadian geese. When they leave in Florida and coming up to Canada or leave in Canada go back, they're going like this. Y'all need to do it too, okay? You need to do it, okay? They're going, quack, 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 quack. I ain't hear no quack, quack. Come on, let's go. Quack, 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 quack. And guess what? When he gets tired, he goes like this. And you take over. You take over. Quack, quack. Okay, she, going, she might send him to Poland. You need to be the Canadian geese. Let's do it again. Y'all need to get. No, y'all think I'm joking. Quack, quack. Quack, quack. He gets tired. He goes to the back. Who take over? Keep going. On TV. You get tired. Who next? Go, come to the back now. Who's taking over? Quack, quack. Quack, quack. She gets tired. Who got takes over now? Because one man can't always be just being always. We need a team. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We need a team. We can't do this on our own. And that's why, let me explain this to you. That's why 
the men of God in these last days, they're getting tired. Yes. You know why? And God has given me a word through what I've been through. He's given me a word because I have influence in this nation. And I'm going to use it for him. I'm going to go back in. Two weeks from now, I'm doing another conference for a large Filipino church out in Oakville. They want me to do the women's conference. Imagine me calling me to do the women's conference. And all the women ask for me to come. I don't know why, but... <laughs> you know. But here's the thing. Men of God are getting tired because they're the one leading and everybody's just watching. And they're watching to see if he gets tired. They're watching if he gets snake bite. They're watching to see if he's swelling up. And nobody is saying, hey man, let me take the hand Here's what the biggest problem, let me, tell you, let me tell you something in the body of Christ right now. We don't have men and women who can be second and third leaders. Anybody who feel they have a call, they think that call means they need to go and start something for themselves. And they feel that call because they think if they are a pastor or a teacher or an evangelist or a prophet, they need to go and start their own. And then they go by themselves in Timbuktu and struggle when they could have taken that gift and stay connected and blossom. Nobody wants to be second man. And nobody wants to be third man. You know in a football team, there's a first... Stringer. But how much you know that guy, if he gets hit, if that team only focus on just having that one quarterback, that team is done. How much you know? That, that team should have how many quarterback? Three, four quarterbacks. How much you know a good church, a healthy church, should have many great Bible teachers in it? We should come to church not with the mentality going forward. Well, what? Is, is Pastor coming this week? Yeah. Is Pastor Marcus here this week? Oh, Sister Singer. She's preaching. To, oh. And then, you, then your expectation go down. No, your expectation should be on the Holy Ghost. You should say, if a child came up here and speak, I can hear from that child. I, I can hear from that child. Then that man, because he, he, he wasn't there that week, he could have got rested, and then he'd come back out next week, and he's come back more stronger. Amen. Than for him to go in week after week, because he got to go week after week to keep the flock keep coming. So all the attention is on him. And it become him instead of God. I've learned these things. When I need a vacation, I'm going to take a vacation. When I need to take a break, I'm going to take a break. Because I did that for 22 years, not taking a break, Brother Dean. Not taking a rest. Thinking my responsibility is to take care of everybody. Your responsibility is to get fed, and you come here, and we use this gifting for the glory of God. Are you all with me now? This ministry has been through the roughest time of any, any, anything a ministry can go through with my, my situation. But we're still here strong. We get ready to buy a new building and we're moving forward. And I'm healed and I'm better. I'm walking in holiness, and sanctification. I'm submitted to men and women of God. And we're going to go forward. We're not going to be a gossiping church that destroys ministries. Let me teach you something about gossip. I want to talk. Man, let me lay hands on you. She wrote a book. It's an amazing book. You all should go and get it from her. her. Support our sister. When is it coming out? Okay, she need to have it on Sunday. Come quickly. Come quick, quick. Tell us quickly about it. One minute. Stay in the anointing. One minute. <laughs> uh, my book is about my struggle with anxiety. I've had my whole life. Um, so about six years ago, I fell really bad with anxiety. And I, I went to a church. This church was teaching me wrong doctrine about how, you know, this was my plot in life. And I was suffering greatly. And I, I truly believed that I wasn't saved and I was going to hell. Uh, I was attacked by the enemy daily. I fought suicidal thoughts. I was sitting in church, um, you know, praising, looking around and everybody else, truly thinking that when I died, I wasn't saved. Uh, I would pray, I was begging God, and 
through all of this, I, I, the Lord led me to Pastor Marcus, and I learned the truth about how God loves me. And now I learned, I learned how I can take any attack of the enemy, and I can stand on the word of God. And I, no matter how, how bad the attack is, I, 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 can, I can say, and I say, I say this all the time, Lord, I ignore myself. I am wrong. I am a liar. Your word is true. Because I'm feeling this. The enemy's telling me this, maybe my flesh. I don't even care because my flesh was crucified with you, Jesus. The enemy was disarmed by you, Jesus. So I'm standing on your word. I could walk around, my body's attacked, my mind is attacked, and I'm still glorifying God. I'm still praising God. And in the darkest times of my life, if I didn't have the struggle, this is where I really have seen God's grace over me. And I have learned the most about the Lord. And I am happy. And if I could that's all I, I want to do is to serve him and to, to love him, to grow more. Because what we can learn of the Lord is unlimited. It's yeah. unlimited, surpassing greatness is the power of the Holy Spirit for us who believes in Ephesians 1. Yeah. So that, I, I want it all, and I want other people to know that all too. She has, she, her job, she's a, um, tell us really, what, what do you do for your living? Oh, I'm a medical coding specialist. I work for a hospital. Um, I read charts, I diagnose charts, and put them all into codes for Health Canada. So she's, she's, she's a statistic kind of person. And so, do you mean you took advantage of her for many years with that, that mind that was supposed to be for God? The enemy took that and tried to defeat her. But thank God for the Word of God and the Holy Spirit that she's overcome. And what she has been through, she can help so many other people. And so she's going to, I want you to go and get this book. I've read it, Pastor Stephen Dorset. And listen, let me tell you something, you're going to be blessed by it. Amen? So you go forward. So, Father, we thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So please go get the book, okay? Let me talk to you something really quickly as we go forward. What's destroying marriages, family, workplace, everything. You see this thing called the tongue? Everybody, just bite it softly. That's the most dangerous weapon on the earth. The tongue. You need to know that tongue can do good and that tongue can destroy. That tongue spoken over a child when they're young can build them up to be giants for the kingdom of God. But that tongue spoken over a child when they're young speaking negative can destroy them and cause them to be a crippled man and woman for the rest of their life unless somebody comes down and speak life over them. Yes. That tongue can spread fire. But that tongue can spread healing. We have a choice in how we use the tongue. Let me show you how we should start thinking for your family members, I'm not, this has nothing to do with church, okay? This has everything to do with life. Everybody say life. life. Shanice is a wonderful young lady. But if I came to her and pulled her to the side, come over here, and say, I ain't, I ain't, nobody know what I'm telling you, you know. What I'm telling you is private, okay? Mm -hmm. You hear me? Mm -hmm. This is, I'm just telling you so you could pray. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? About Shanice. Mm -hmm. The moment I start speaking, hear what I'm about to say now, and let's learn this in our life. The moment I start speaking about Shanice or anybody, when Shanice is not in, a, in, in our presence to defend herself, that is called gossip. Yes. So if somebody comes to you and starts saying, let me tell you what I hear, what do you do? Uh-huh. Girl, uh-huh. Uh, really? No, 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 no. You need to say, you know what? If they're not here to validate what you're saying, I don't want to hear it. Can you all do that? Can you all do that? For your one brother call you to tell you about what, others, what sister said about you. One mother call you to tell you what your brother said about you. One co-worker in lunch break telling you what they hear the supervisor saying about you. And now you walking now inside with this inside of you. Resentment, anger, fear. That's how the enemy slow us down. 
Say this with you, over yourself. My ears and my brain is not a garbage can. Make a decision. Jesus never participated in gossip. And I can tell you, I, 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 I would be the first. I think I was one of the biggest gossipers myself. Because I want to know information in life. And I had to repent to Jesus about that. Because when you feel that you need to know what people are saying about you, it's a form of insecurity and not putting your trust in God. Yes. Are you all hearing me? Yes. You just make sure each and every one of you do what's right before God and then leave it to God. Amen? Amen. Was this helpful this morning? Yes. So here's what you learned from this little time. Let people watch you. Let people talk about you. You just be a man or woman of what? Integrity. The snake bite will not what? Destroy you. Teenagers, don't fall apart when bullies come against you. People in workplace, family speaking, don't fall apart. Vengeance is what? The Lord's. It's not yours. Because when you go back and somebody say something about you and you go back and throw more words, you know what you're just doing? You're throwing more wood in a fire. Don't put any more wood in a fire. If you don't have any wood in the fire, that fire can't keep going. Be the kind of person, be a man and woman of what? Prayer. Say prayer. prayer. Here's what we're supposed to do more than ever. How much you would like to us to come and do some night prayers? How much, you would, how much you would come for night prayers? How many hands lifting up right now? How many people will come for night prayers to pray? Amen. We're going to call for some nights of prayer. Is a Friday night good? A Friday night prayer? Yes. Amen. We're going to do some prayer. We're going to do some prayer up here. We're going to do some prayer in Toronto. Okay? For both. So if it, in case you're in Toronto. But we, we're going to give ourselves to prayer. We're going to go on a computer and pray also. Amen? We, you know, some of you are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could do that in my bed. I, you know, put the computer in front of me <laughs> under the wall. But we're going to pray. We're going to pray. And the men, last thing. Man, I've been, I've been, I've been really weeping for our men in my heart. Ladies, can I say something to y'all? And please don't, please don't take this the wrong way. How much you know men need support more than ever right now? Amen. Your sons. All the ladies want to say, oh, before the room, Amy, you say, well, what about us? We need support too. <laughs> I said, how much you ladies know you need to pray for our men right now? Our brothers, our husbands, our sons. There is a spiritual attack on manhood right now. Y'all, see, don't be so naive and make it about you. Because if that man is in a good place, you guys will be in a good place. Pray for your sons. Pray for them. This is my little boy, Nathaniel. Come here. Come, son. He took his shirt off and everything. He's cool. I have to dress him. I don't dress him no more. He tells me what he wants to wear every morning. You know? But from this age, lay hands on them. And declare, you're intelligent. You're a man of God. You're a son of God. Amen? Do you know that about yourself? What's the scripture daddy told you this morning? What is the one scripture? Remember? Philippians. Remember the Philippians? 2 13. Yeah, say it. Yeah, Philippians. Yeah, go say it. Philippians 14 to. Philippians 4 13. 13. And what did it say? I remember. <laughs> I gave blade, blade if you tell me. I remember. I can do. All things to Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. I can do all things to Jesus Christ. Amen. Go sit. Awesome. I can do all things to Jesus Christ who strengthens me. I keep telling him that. You can do all things. Through. You are intelligent. You are a man of God. You are a prophet of God. God speaks to you. Speak life over your children. Speak life over your life. Speak life over your, your wife, your husband, your brother. Say, I'm going to use this tongue to reverse every demonic curse over my family. I'm going to use my tongue and speak life over my family. I'm not going to use my tongue to say nothing silly, only words that bring life. Was this helpful? Amen. So we, we just want to thank you all for, for this wonderful day, for Pastor's Appreciation Day. We, we, it was a great day. I hope I didn't over-preach you all. Amen. But we're coming back strong in Jesus' name. Amen. Do I sound like I'm getting back strong? Yes. Amen. I want to thank my little brother, Pastor Keon. 
Well, he's my big brother size-wise, you know, uh, but he's my little brother. You know, I want to thank uh, big man, you know, I, I call him big man, you know. You know, thank you so much, my little brother, and Pastor Steve, and, and, and Pastor Lynette, and Pastor Veronica is in Trinidad right now, and, and Pastor Winston, if he's watching, and Pastor uh, Elliot, and Pastor Emmanuel, thank you all so much uh, for, you know, and, and, and all the, the staff. How much you know our staff? Man, they're amazing. Sister Shireen, and, you know, Martin, and, and, and pa- Sister Dolry, and, and, and Jean, you know, thank you all. For all, and, and, and Serene and, 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 and all the other staff, you know, they, they work hard. Did I, did I forget any of the paid staff? Nathan, thank you all for all, well, you know, Josh, you know, Brother Emmanuel, all, and that's the worship team. Like, I'm just, I just want to see, I just, I just, I just want to see us as a church go forward now. Amen? And the power of the Holy Spirit. When we come here on Sunday, joyful. When we leave this service today and we say service is over a little early today, we're not dashing for the door. We're getting to know one another. The people who are custom sitting on this side, go and meet some people on that side. The people on that side, go. Let's create the activity of, hey, you want to go out for lunch today? Hey, this is a new family. Let me meet this new family. Let's go out for lunch today. Amen? Oh, let's, let's, let's build that sort of relationship as we go forward. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So I'll turn it over right now. Um, so let's, 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 uh, you guys are going to worship a little bit. Let's, let's, let's sing some songs. Go ahead. Let's worship the Lord. Why don't we all stand? Let's just praise God from that word we got this morning. Hallelujah. 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 He is my faithful father calling me out of the dark. And I cannot whisper away what he said in the light. He is my firm foundation. My anchor won't be moved. Storms may collide, but my soul is on fire with his word. He has never lost a battle. And who are you, great mountain, that you should not bow low? Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle.
defender. He's my strong tower. He has never lost a battle. He has never lost a battle. If you believe it, sing it with me. My great defender. My great defender. He's our strong tower. My strong tower. He has never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. No, he's never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. Our great defender. things that the church has is the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues. But you see, worship, I'm now getting an illumination from worship, how powerful worship is. Miss Marcus, it's good to see you. Let me tell you how powerful worship is. When Jehoshaphat was a king, faced the great army that came against him, he did not send the warriors to fight. You know who he sent? He sent the priests and he sent the worshipers. I have been in places in my life, church, when you don't feel like you have a word to come out of your mouth, where you feel you don't even have the energy from on the inside to lift your hands even here. But I will tell you something, there's something called a faith worship. Everybody say, faith worship. Everybody say, faith worship. It means you go beyond how you feel. It means you go beyond what you're dealing with. It means by faith, I'm gonna lift up my hands. By faith, I'm gonna open up my mouth. By faith, I'm gonna worship God. By faith, I'm gonna declare that I am an overcomer. Even though all the voices in your ears is telling you defeat. By faith, you turn the table. By faith, you release the power of God in your situation. When you begin to declare what the Lord says about your situation. So when I say he never lost a battle, you may feel like you are losing the battle. But when I say he never lost a battle, means that he will never lose a battle in your life. Come on somebody. I'm declaring over your life. Who are you great mountain? Who are you great mountain? Mountain you will fall. Mountain you will crumble. Mountain you will not stay in my life. Come on somebody. For if God be for me, who can be against me? 
God's spirit, God's power, God's might, God's grace, God's goodness says it will follow you all the days of your life. Declare who God says you are today. Fight the good fight of faith this morning. Come out of that place of feeling down. Come out of it, church. I say, come out of it. Come out of it. Come out of it. We're not going to go home the same way. No way we're not going to let that happen today. We're going to worship God. Who are you? Come on, say it again. Who are you? Who are you? relationships that God has in this church that's your connection to one another when you find that person there's something called divine connection there are people that God has put one another that that other person knows somebody who's going to open up a door for you there might be somebody you know that's going to you might end up doing something with business together the unity that is in this church the unity that is in church where we start knowing one another names and really looking out for one another God is calling us for that in this room we have the money for our building in this room we have everything we need but far what enemy has caused a suspicion to come upon people but now that is I feel like it's lifted off today it's lifted off today we are a family. Come, come Serene, quickly. Run up here, Serene. Thank God for this young lady. Give her a round of applause. Come up here. If you share, take one minute and share what God's been saying in your heart about family. Okay, well, good morning, everybody. Um, what the Lord has been telling me is that there is so much importance with the family, right? Our job is to love one another and build each other up not crush each other down but build each other up if any person is hurting we should be able to call one another for prayer for support for encouragement even if it's just the presence it makes a difference so we know that no matter what happens no matter what scheme or plan or attack of the enemy against our lives we have our family we have holy spirit on the inside of us but we have our family to be there to encourage and support us so um I don't want to take over too much. That's it. That's it, Pastor. Thank you. Do you know, do you know this young lady? She graduated from seminary four years. She's a preacher. She got the word inside of her. She's not just the person who run around and do all the things, but she's a ministry gift to the body of Christ. Y'all know that? And I want y'all to give her that kind of honor because this young lady, when she speaks, she speaks on behalf of Pastor Keon. She speaks on behalf of me. Amen. Let's give her that respect. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Church, I don't know. I just feel the love of God for y'all today. Y'all feel the love for me? Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me in the challenging times. I just have to tell Nigel and his beautiful wife. 
you know, Gloria, this two couple here, Nigel's on our board. I know Nigel when he came and he was at the most broken place in his life. I know the young lady when she came and young, you know, and to see their testimony. When there was a time Nigel couldn't rub two pennies together. I can be honest with you, but to see how God has blessed this man. I see the new car he drives like, MV Kodong in Jesus' name. But to see how God has blessed him. To see this young lady being a single mother coming to our church many years ago. And Nigel been through a devastating divorce. Broke him. And God brought them together. And to see her going to university and finishing from moving from just a high school single mother to getting a degree as a social worker to now leading an organization in Toronto to see him be he couldn't even find a job he graduated as an engineer he's an engineer by trade by university degree he's a smart guy but nothing was happening for him nothing was happening for him and to see how God reversed the curse reversed everything in his life to see that he, he, he that's why he makes six figures salary now I'm not saying that just to show you how God takes people from broken places from the places that you never thought they can come back from these two people will be the sermon this morning these two people you could have looked and said he was the snake that 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 the Paul he was the Paul that the snake by when you look at him he says no way he's coming back from this there's no way he's coming back from this from losing everything to come back to have a great job to have a great salary to have a great wife and family to be in ministry to be in leadership to be a preacher to have gone to bible school i'm telling you the god we serve is a promoter the god we serve is the one who takes us from the lowly places and brings us up your destination you may have felt like your life has been snakes and ladders for the young people who don't know what snakes and ladders anybody know what snakes and ladders you know snakes like when you play the game and you go one two three four five and you go up this go up the ladder and then you shoot again and go one two three and do those shoot and then one two three and a snake and you go and if you man all this time i've been climbing up and then i'm like i'm back down you ever feel that way sometime but i'm telling you god is not done with you you felt like you got just got bitten and you just went back down some of you might be in that place i know what that place feels like and that place is like you're here this morning and you're hearing all this preaching and let me tell you something i know this eh i know this i'm not no weak preacher i'm not a i know that when i'm preaching if you're in a hurtful place i might sound in your ears annoying you know why because the truth is coming and it's attacking that fear because you're settling you see the turn of israel when caleb and joshua came back and says we can take the promised land when the other spy says we can't, Cable and jo the, the, the people got so mad, they said, let's stone them. They got so mad. That's why we need a prophetic. That's why when we preach, we don't just teach, but we teach with the prophetic. You preach with the prophetic because the prophetic with the word, you break things off. Yes. Some of you need to, you need to do this right now. And I can, I can be forceful because I know what it is to be on that side, hearing the word with pain in your heart, with feeling down, with you saying, Pastor, you don't know what I got to go home to. You don't know what I'm dealing with. I know that feeling when everybody's song is so good up here. God's song so good. God's song so good up here. I just talked about how God is doing great things in everybody. said, but I ain't seen it in mine. When is my time coming? That's the question. It's coming. If you'll just stay faithful to God, it's coming. Relationships are turning. Stay hooked up in the word and in faith. This too, this too that you are facing, listen to me, say it with yourself. This too shall pass. I'm not going to be defeated. Come on, say it. I'm not going to be defeated. This too shall pass. Because God promises us he will not put you to shame he will not put you to shame you're gonna rise again I said I'm gonna rise you're gonna rise again amen, amen. so y'all blessed this morning amen. young teenagers let me hear all the teenagers say eh, eh. they're like what's the young people words what do they say nowadays I don't know what young people say anymore 
But all the, what's that? What did it say? What is Oh, I just heard the young people say EIA. Is that it? What does EIA mean? Huh? Oh, YAE. Anyway, young people, we have a lot of good things in store for you. Next week, here's what I want us to do. Y'all want to give me the best pastoral gift? I want each and every one of you to make it, make, make, make it your fate declaration this Sunday, next Sunday. I want you to invite two people to church. How many people, the person who brings the most people to church next week, this is just a little fun thing. Nobody's, this is me doing this. I'm going to have a gift for that person. It's going to be a nice gift too. I just want to encourage you guys. Just something just to create a little fun. Is that okay? I'm not manipulating you. I just want to encourage you. Invite some people to church next week. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, invite. So let's just pray over, the, pray over the offering this morning. Father, this morning, I thank you for this church. I thank you for the people in this church. Father, I pray going forward that when people hear us and see us or come in the midst of this church they will not feel judged they will not feel condemned but they will feel loved they will feel appreciated they will feel like they are part of a family I ask you today, Father, that you touch the heart of Destiny Dominion, not only this campus, but all of our campuses, that we have the same spirit of faith. Let us walk in unity. Let us put the word first. Let us put our trust in the move of the spirit in our lives. And Father, I pray that every person that is here and under the sound of my voice watching us even online right now that you're stirring up their hearts to follow Jesus our heart is to follow Jesus not man take away the fear of man in our hearts that we will not fear man and let us not put man on pedestal but you be the one that's high and lifted but let us look out for one another as a people of God. Let us encourage those when they fall or when they don't do what's right. Let us lift them up in prayer and in unity. I pray for the finances in the lives of your people. Financial stress, no human being should go through this, Lord. You say the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. I am thanking you that you are providing all the needs of your people's lives today. I am asking you in these last days that you cause the members of Destiny Dominion to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. I pray that, Father, we will be employers and not only employees. Give them creativity, Lord God. Let them, when they just sit down or go to bed, Lord, they wake up with such an idea that is from you to start businesses. Lord, that they will start being, Lord, the one who lend and not borrow. I declare over their health that we are a church that is healthy. We walk in divine health from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. We are healthy emotionally. We are healthy mentally. We're healthy physically. Father, we thank you for this. Father, I am thanking that you are bringing in a new crop of men and women into this ministry. I feel it. Lord, I am asking you to send me 12 powerful leader men to stand around my shoulders. Send men of character. Men who understand military mindset. Who understand warfare in the spirit. Men of, of, of humility. Send women of God that will stand and look over this church in prayer. 
Send their youths, Lord God, in this city that have been broken and hurting. Send men and women who have a heart for youth. Send men and women who have a heart for children. Send men and women who wants to serve. That all our departments lack nothing. Thank you for our new building, Lord. Building for Scarborough, building for Toronto. Thank you. Thank you for everything we need to fulfill this vision. Thank you for blessing us with our building in Oshawa. Thank you for blessing us our building in Brampton. Thank you that these churches are multiplying and growing. Thank you for what you're doing. Send sincere men. Men and women, Lord God, that wants to work in unity for one vision, which is to lift up your name. Protect us from wrong influence. Protect us from the witches and the warlocks. Protect us from every demonic and satanic things that will try to enter our church. Grant us discernment to recognize what is not of God and what is of God. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over our ministry. At the four corners spiritually of this ministry. We thank you that the spirit of truth will lead us and there will be great discernment upon the people to recognize what is of God and what is not of God. We thank you that we will flow in the anointing. We desire the gifts of the spirit to be in operation in the lives of the people. That the people will flow in the spirit that they will come full of you, Lord God. That this will not be a weak church in this end time. That we will be strong as a church in these last days. We will have a voice politically, spiritually, financially on this earth, Lord God. That Lord, the leaders of our nation will look to us as a church for what God is saying. And no man will receive glory but Jesus. Lord, I pray that humility, we have to humble ourselves. So we make a change in our way of living to humble ourselves we depend on your love and your forgiveness and your grace and your mercy every day and fathers we go forward we hold no one in our hearts our hearts are cleansed we're free our conscience are free to love all men so your spirit can move through us may this house be called a house of May when we call for prayer in this house, there will not just be four or five or ten, but there will be hundreds that will come. And as I declared next Sunday, we will see a double of our attendance today. Because your people now, Lord, will take the ownership of seeing this church, your church, move forward. Our eyes are not on a man anymore. But our eyes are on the one man, the God man, who sits high above, Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, we ask you to multiply us. Holy Spirit, we ask you to grant us favor with God and man, and we have it already, so we receive it. And we thank you that you multiply us. We thank you that there's no heaviness on us as we leave here today. But there's joy and laughter and peace. There's freedom and there's unity in our hearts as we leave this place. We thank you for this right now, in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. let's bring the offering basket right now. Ushers, direct the people, let them come from the back to the front, and let's worship the Lord in our giving. And after this service, if you would like, continue to have prayer. Myself and the pastors will be in the front, ready to pray with you. Let's bring our offerings as we worship the Lord. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive sing I'm, I'm gonna, gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder louder and louder, louder. you're gonna, gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes
God, church, did you have a good time this morning? Yeah. Slip our hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Well, church, you are dismissed. But before you go, don't forget, today is Pastor Appreciation Sunday. We have prepared a little light snack for everybody. So we invite you to meet in Cafe Connect as we fellowship. Amen. Don't forget there's services this Wednesday in Toronto here in and in. So Pastor is saying that he's going to be preaching in Toronto this upcoming Wednesday. Pastor Steve will be here in Scarborough. Amen. Register online if you plan on attending the business, uh, the church business meeting. If you're planning on attending, if in person or virtual, please sign up online. You can do so on the website at dd.booking. Amen. Glory to God. We love you. Enjoy your Sunday. Have a great day, guys. God bless. Take the biblical principles learned today and apply them to your everyday lives. Our prayer lines are still open, so please give us a call. To keep up to date on upcoming classes, services, and events, we encourage you to stay connected on our social media platforms and our website, dd.church. Thank you once again for joining us. We declare that you are blessed in Jesus' name. Have an amazing week. I just want to say thank you for supporting Destiny Dominion Word Ministries. We appreciate your seed sown today. We appreciate your giving. And thank you for standing with us as we preach this uncompromising gospel around the world. My prayer for you today, as you sow the seed, may God multiply it in your life in Jesus' name. Thank you once again, and God bless you.